Hey people, how's it going? This is Bharat here. Welcome back to yet another video series. A uh, lot of you guys have been asking me about uh, questions uh, in, in terms of writing applications, creating applications, what are the other things that are available. Since we have been seeing more about creating GUI applications as part of this, this channel here, we have learned more about Flutter, we have learned more about ReactJS, we have even learned about uh, the Python Skivy library. So as part of this video series, I'm going to be taking you guys through an important uh, Python library called SpyQt. So PyQt is a primarily a desktop application, a desktop application library, meaning you can create desktop applications much easily. Uh, you, can you do an, a, a mobile application with that? I have not tried it and I think it is possible, uh, but it's not going to be an easy to do application. Rather, its primary focus is to create desktop applications and it's a very, very interesting tool as well. It is going to give you guys a lot of uh, free space to play with and comparing it with Kiwi, it's also a much better uh, library than Kiwi for a lot of reasons which I'm going to be discussing as part of the upcoming videos. So if you see the history of Qt, it's been under development for over 10 years now. Starting with the first library or the PyQt library which came out in the year 2010 if I'm not wrong and even before that if I'm right. And it's been under development for so long and it's also taken a lot of evolving cycles. It started out as a desktop library to create for Windows only. But right now it is being able to do across all the different OS's. You don't have to worry about porting it for different OS, just write one code and it's going to be applicable for your Windows, Mac as well as Ubuntu. And that's what is very good about this as well. So we're going to be learning about that. We're going to be understanding from the basics on how do you even initialize an application in, uh, in GUI for your Windows, uh, Ubuntu as well as Mac. And taking it from that, the basics of that, you're going to be learning and understanding about the complex application. Like you are going to be arranging widgets in a layout, you're going to be uh, communicating with the network. All of that is going to be discussed as part of the next 10 videos. So I've planned it out in such a way that all the beginners, advanced, as well as intermediate people who have learned, understood Python can pick this library up easily. And also the main reason for making this video series is to give you guys an understanding of what are the different uh, libraries that are out there that can do one work much easily. So in this video series, it's not going to be about what is, what is better, is Python Kiwi better, is Flutter better, is ReactJS better. Rather, it is going to be about just the understanding of how you can create applications much faster. If you see a simple example, the most famous application currently with the desktop is the Slack. A lot of companies use it, a lot of teams use it for communication. Slack is a very, very important application. So if you see that desktop applications, you, you see the use for desktop application is always high. A lot of teams do want desktop applications. A lot of companies do want desktop applications. So there's definitely a scope for understanding and learning about this library. And that's what I'm going to be trying to give you guys in the next 10 videos. The history with uh, PyQt is that it was created by a company called River Bank Computing. It's still being owned by them, but it's a free to uh, use software, meaning that you don't have to get any kind of license or pay any money to them. So it's just going to be simple uh, installation in your environment and you're ready to go. You can start developing uh, out on your own. I'm going to be discussing about a lot of different uh, components that are out there with PyQt, starting from the very first video on setup and environment setup, taking you guys through multiple videos and widgets, layouts, and even concepts like QT networking, where you're going to be using the network package or network library that comes with this package and understanding how do you communicate with the network or server. So that's going to be about it for the next 10 videos. I'm very, very excited to talk to you guys about it. Uh, it's also a learning curve for me as well, since I'm not being, I've been using it for less than a month and a half. So I'm going to be learning about a lot of new things on the go and I'm going to be hopefully communicating it with you guys also uh, easily. So let's get this video series started. I'm very excited. To meet you guys in the video series starting from the first one where we're going to be setting up our environment and getting the work started let's go 